Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Coffee and Cartridges. Take some time, just relax, drink some coffee, and let's talk about rifle cartridges. Stay tuned. Today, I'm gonna to talk about some of the offspring of the 404 Jeffries. So I'm gonna show you a picture here. Now this is the 30-06 on the left, 375 H and H in the middle, and the 404 Jeffries on the right. These three cases have spawned many, many cartridges. They are the parent case to many, many cartridges. They themselves were inspired by other cartridges, some black powder, Nitro Express type cartridges. 30-06, of course, kind of came from the eight and seven millimeter Mauser. But for all intents and purposes, these are three of the OG. They all came out the very beginning of the 20th century. And they're still pretty cool today. A lot of offspring have come from these. In particular, the 404 Jeffries. It was kind of known as a Big Five Dangerous Game African round. A lot like the 416 Rigby, not quite as powerful, but with less recoil. Um, it definitely had its fans. It definitely had its place. A um, hundred years later, <laughs> around the turn of the 21st century, you know, several cartridge families started to become derived for that. I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, the first of these commercially would have been the Winchester short magnums around the 1999 time frame. They come out with a 300 Winchester short magnum, later followed by the 270, the 7 millimeter, and the 325 Winchester short magnum. Remington around that same exact time came out with the rums, the Remington Ultra Magnums. You have your 300, your 7 millimeter, your 338, and your 375 rums. And then to compete, and I might be getting some of these orders mixed up, but to compete with the short mags of Winchester, they come out with the Psalms, the, the short action Ultra Mags. And then of course, you know, 15 years later or so, Nosler has come out with several, uh, I guess about 15 to 20 years later, several cartridges also linking back to that 404 Jeffries in their Nosler cartridges. Now, not all of their Nosler cartridges, but in particular the 26, 27, 28, 30, and 33. Today, I'm gonna do a deep dive into the short mags, the Winchester short mags, and the Nosler cartridges. Not gonna talk a whole lot today, I might in a future video, about the rums and the psalms. But here's the basic breakdown. You take that 475 H and H, keep it in its full length size, make a lot of modern improvements to it. You basically have the rum neck to whatever cartridge. And then shorten that down to a standard action, modern improvements, you basically have your Nosslers. Shorten that down to a short action, and right on the very edge of short action, you have your Winchester short mags. And then a little bit smaller even then, more comfortably fitting in a short action, is your Psalms. Recently did a video where I talked about the best designed seven millimeter cartridges of all time. And I ended up getting down to three. One was more geared toward short action, one more geared toward standard action, and then one was more of a Magnum class. And even though the 28 Nosler, which is the one I picked for the Magnum class, technically is a long action, not a Magnum action, it belongs in that Magnum class. And you know, as I did that video, I really gained a new appreciation for that 28 Nosler. It really is a cool cartridge. I will correct myself, I made two mistakes. The Sammy specs show a one in nine twist rate, not a one in eight. Though I do believe there are rifles being factory manufactured today that are 1 in 8 for the 28 Nosler, but the design is 1 in 9 twist rate. 
And then also on the body taper, I said that it had a 6,000th body taper, which was the smallest of all. That's not true. My reloading manual um, at the base of the case didn't show any measurement. And therefore, I thought the rim diameter was the same as the base diameter. It's actually more like um, 22 um, thousandths. So I was wrong on a couple things there. Still, Nosler's a great case. When I think of modern case design, of course I think of all the stuff that Hornady's doing. You know, they're thinking ahead about fast twist rates, high BC bullets, tight tolerances in the chamber, making sure there's enough space in there for those heavy bullets. Sometimes shortening a case a little bit to make sure it has room for a long neck, a long enough neck, and to make sure it has plenty of room for that bullet. But even going back to the beginning of the 20th century, or I'm sorry, 21st century, I really think that those 300, that that 300 short mag was really ahead of its time. It's really a good cartridge. I did a video a long time ago about um, the history of all rifle cartridge design. If you search hopeful remnant um, rifle cartridge history or something like that, it'll bring it up. And I also did a video about modern case design, if you search for that, hopeful remnant modern case design. But I've always said the first, what I would call modern case design, is the 300 Savage, I believe back in 1920. And then of course, P.O. Ackley jumped in the scene, made some cool improvements. Weatherby made some improvements. Lots of improvements have been made. And then of course, today we have a lot of things by Hornady that are doing, that I think are doing some great work. But I wanna to focus today on the short mag case design and then the Nostler case design because I'm very impressed with both of them. So just sit back, relax. I'm gonna kind of nerd out for a few minutes about cartridge design. Uh, just drink some coffee, just relax, and let's look at this. All right, we got the 300 WSM here. This is a very crude drawing of mine. I'm gonna go over some specs here. First of all, rim is 535. Diameter at the base is 555. Diameter at the shoulder, right when it begins, is 538. Therefore, the body taper is 0.17, so 17 thousandths. And all this is going to mean something here in a second. I'm not just randomly giving you numbers. I want to show the okay length from base to the beginning of the shoulder is 1.664. Then we have the, the shoulder itself, that is from here to here, not the, the degrees, just from here to here, the distance, 1 uh, 0.138. So base to neck is 1.802, and then neck is, is, is 2.8. Okay, that means the overall case is 2.1, and the overall cartridge length, including the bullet, is 2.8 inches. Now see the little asterisk or star, 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 star. That's what these things have in common. Body taper, shoulder angle, case length, cartridge overall length. They're the exact same on the 270 WSM, the 7 millimeter WSM, 300 WSM, and 325 WSM. Exactly the same. But where there is a difference, is this measurement, this measurement, this measurement, and this measurement. So the case will end up being the same, and the overall length will end up being the same, but how we get there is different. So you can see I've got a few different things written down here to kind of talk about it, but let's first go to shoulder length. Once again, that's not the degree of shoulder, but just the length of it. You'll notice the 270 has the longest shoulder length, and that's 0.16. And as we get increase in caliber, it goes smaller. That cannot change. There's nothing anyone could do. It's not a design, it's just physics. It's a 35 degree angle from this point to here. And depending on the caliber, if it's a you know 325, it's not gonna take long to get to that 
caliber. If it's a 270, it's going to take longer to get to the caliber, therefore making this shoulder area longer. So that's a given. That's a, a fixed number. It's not going to change. So as your shoulder, as your caliber gets bigger, your shoulder length will decrease. Well, how do they compensate for that? Because remember, the case length on all of them is 2.1. It doesn't change. But yet there's a different shoulder length. Well, the neck is different. So in theory, your neck would be the shortest and get biggest toward the 325 to compensate for the reverse happening with the shoulder length. And that is the case if you block out the this one here. So you got 276, 298, 308. That's exactly what's happening. But who? Why is that neck length so short? Interesting. So we'll come back to that. Here we have the inches to the shoulder. Once again, that's that number right there from base to shoulder. They're all exactly the same. 1.664, except for that seven millimeter. Okay. And then your inches to the neck, you know, this number all the way to the neck is getting smaller once again because the shoulder length is getting smaller except once again the seven millimeter so you have an outlier here all these are similar except for one basically the seven millimeter wsm is longer here and shorter here it just has a shorter neck but a longer main um case isn't that weird fyi there's the twists for all of them now point being i have a question for you why <laughs> why did they decide to change the seven millimeter what happens is the seven millimeter technically has more case capacity but a shorter shoulder they just kind of crammed it in that short action i don't know maybe they just wanted to throw something different you might think, well, they don't want the 7WSM to accidentally be chambered in a 300, and therefore they made it a little bit longer so that couldn't happen. But if that was the case, what about the 270? It can go in the 300, and the 300 can go in the 325. So that can't be it. So I have no idea why they changed their minds on the 7mm WSM. It's kind of strange. And since we're talking about it, let's look at the 6.8 Western. It is different. The cartridge overall length is actually longer than the normal WSMs, but the case is shorter. So it has a shorter case, but a longer cartridge overall length because it's designed for the heavy bullets. And all these numbers are going to pretty much fall in line with everything I've told you. Shoulder, it's a 27 caliber, so it has to be the same. The neck doesn't have to be the same, but it is, 276. So there is literally no difference in the 270 short mag and the 6.8 Western, except the 6.8 Western's main body, you know, that part right there is just 8 tenths of an inch shorter. And then, of course, it has a faster twist rate for the heavier bullets. Okay, next. This is a 26 Nossler, an even more crude drawing, poorly drawn. Rim diameter, 534. At the base, it's 550, slightly shorter. And at the shoulder, it is 528. Therefore, it is a 22 thousandths body taper versus a 17 thousandths on the WSM. Now, on the 26 Nossler, from base to shoulder, is 2.166 the shoulder itself is 165 base to neck is 2.331 the neck itself is 259 the overall case is 2.590 and the overall cartridge is 3.40 which of course fits into a standard action now if you'll notice the little star is only there 
and there. The only thing that are the same is the cartridge overall length and the shoulder angle of these five cartridges. So they're not quite as uniform as the WSM. All right, and by the way, there's the twist rates. Okay. So first of all, let's go back to that fixed measurement. We already know, based on what I told you, that this cannot change. So as so the shoulder length on the 26 nozzler is the longest because it taking that 35 degree shoulder angle longer to get to that caliber than it is say the 33. So that's a fixed measurement. Therefore, you would assume to counteract that you would have a neck length that is the reverse of that. And it is pretty well the same except except for one outlier, the 27 nozzle. If you take that out, it is. The neck keeps getting longer. So just like with the WSM, as the caliber gets bigger, the shoulder length decreases because it takes shorter distance for that angle to get to the caliber dimension. And in turn, the neck can be longer because they want a general overall, uh, overall same case. However, the case is not exactly the same as it was with the WSM. So notice the 26, 27, and 28 case length are exactly the same, but then the 30 case length is shorter and the 33 is even shorter. Interesting. All right, let's, let's look at this. Inches to shoulder. So that's from the base, from the, from the base to the shoulder, just the overall main body of the case 2.166 on the 26 and 28 they're the, exactly the same but that 27 once again is different quite a bit different and then the 30 and 33 are also different they have a little bit shorter overall length on the case well the case leading up to the shoulder and therefore it corresponds because of you know with, with inches to the neck because once again that can't change and that, of course, makes their overall case length that, which is interesting. Now, here's my thought on the 30 and 33. Maybe they shortened the case on the 30 and 33 because they knew in order to get heavier bullets and yet keep that same 3.340 overall length, it just might work out better like that. That's my theory, but in all honesty, I don't really think that's the case. I mean, you could, those case lengths could be identical in my opinion, and you're gonna be all right, but maybe you can help me out in the comments. I'm not 100% sure why those cases are shorter, unless they just thought they needed more freeboard room or more room for the bigger 30 and 33 caliber bullets. But the oddball, once again, it's like the seven millimeter WSN, the oddball is that 27. It has exactly the same case length as the 26 and 28, but it's shorter on the main part of the case and has a longer neck. So basically the 27 is the reverse of the seven millimeter. Instead of it having a longer body and a shorter neck, the 27 has a little bit shorter body and a longer neck. Now, I do know the 27 was made last, so they, they made the 26, 28, 30, 33, and then they went back and made the 27, and they tweaked it a little bit. And the only thing I see that they tweaked it on was a little bit longer neck, a little bit shorter case body. Therefore, it's going to have slightly less case capacity than the 26 and the 28. One last weird thing to tell you. The body taper is not identical on all of them, but it is on four of the five, okay? The body taper is 22 thousandths, but for some reason, the 33 Nosler is only 21 thousandths because that number right there, the dimension at the shoulder is 529. Why, when they got to 33 Nosler, would they change it by one thousandths? Really weird. I don't know, but those are your outliers. So I guess my overall thoughts are, I'm a big fan of the Nosler cartridges. 
and I'm a big fan of the Winchester short magnum cartridges. The 7 short mag definitely was a little odd on their design choices. And of course I own a 270 short mag, so I'm a big fan of it. And I have a lot of respect for the 300. It's more straightforward though, but with that Nosler, it's just interesting to look at that. You know, why did they tweak the 27? Like when they got to that point, why did they tweak it? Did they just want that longer neck and was willing to sacrifice a little bit of case capacity? Anyway, pretty cool. And I found pretty interesting little in-depth look there. Overall, the short mags and the Nosslers are very similar. Just the Nosslers are for full length, you know, standard actions. Therefore, they're gonna have a little bit longer case with a little more case capacity. What's my favorite? If I were to compare the WSMs versus an Osler overall, which would I pick? If you watch my channel, you probably know I'm gonna pick the WSMs. It's just more my style, more of that less recoil, more efficient design. And for what I hunt around here, it's more ideal. However, if I was out west and I was hunting more elk, moose, even though something like the 300 WSM could definitely work. Maybe something like a 28 Nosler, 30 Nosler, 33 Nosler would, wor would work better. So if I lived out west, lived in Alaska, hunted bigger game regularly, probably go with a 28 Nosler. But me personally, I just prefer those WSMs. If I was to rank the WSMs, my least favorite, and they're all good, would be the 7 WSM. Next would be the 325. I actually think the 325 is pretty cool. If you were going to shoot lighter bullets per caliber, they're going to, you know, if it's the same weight bullet, it's going to go faster than that 300. Um, but it's, it's definitely not going to be an ultra long range cartridge, but it could be pretty cool. Next, I would say the 270, the one I have is, is the next best. It's more up my alley, it's more my style. It would be the one I would pick, obviously I did pick it. But as far as ranking them, I'd say the 300 WSM is the best. With that 30 grain bolt, you just have more versatility. And that one in 10 twist rate in a 30 caliber, is way more versatile and way more useful, I would say for heavier bullets than it would be in a 27 caliber. So I'll go with the 300 WSM number one. But let me just tell you, if you want a speed demon, the 130 grain 270 WSM is where it's at. And if you want an amazing bullet, that 150 grain 270 WSM is awesome. What about the Nosler? How would I rank the Nosslers? Of just those five, I know there's a 20 Nosler, a 22 Nosler, but of those five, how would I rank them? This is tough. They're all good. I mean, there's, there's none of them that are not good. For me personally, the, the last one would be the 33 NOS, so I just am not going to use it. I don't have a point of using it. But if you was, you know, hunting moose, I mean, that'd be a heck of a round. But I guess I would rank it last, no fault of its own. Probably followed by the 30 NOS, or it would be next to last. And once again, no fault of its own. It's just, I love the 308, I love the 30-06, I like the 300 WSM. I, it's hard for me to find room. <laughs> for the 30 Nosler in there. So I guess I'd rank it next. Next, I think I'd rank the 26, the original Nosler as the third best. Man, it's good, but it's got, it's so much like other caliber or cartridges. It's, it's not that much different than a 264 Win Mag, um, 6.5 Weatherby RPM. You can go even faster if you want, like a 6.5 300 Weatherby. Of course, my personal favorite is the 6.5284. You've got the Creedmoor and the PRC. There's just, it's such a cluttered field. It's, I would just rank it third, I guess. Number two, I would rank the 27 Nosler. You know, I'm pretty impressed with it. With that one and eight and a half twist, definitely they've thought it through and made a few tweaks. You know, it's kind of geared for a little bit heavier bullets. I'm, I'm liking it more every day. I think I would rank it number two. And then of course, number one, I think the 28 Nosler is just the best all around. Of the, of the Nosler cartridges, the 28 Nosler is just cream of the crop. Let me throw the 6.8 Western in there. I 
I do like it. I like it quite a bit, actually. I was very tempted between the 6.8 Western and the 270 Short Mag, and I wasn't sure which one I wanted until I watched a video by the Social Regressive where he was, it was a video about the 6.8 Western, and he was talking about how good it is and how it compares with other cartridges, but it was in his comparisons that my eyes were open to how good the 270 Short Mag was, and then I probably, you know, I just was looking to buy one of them, and I was thinking about the Winchester XPR, and then I just couldn't find either one, and finally I found one and got a deal on the 270 WSM, so it was kind of a toss-up. But I'm actually glad I got the 270 WSM. It's not as versatile as the 6.8 Western. The 6.8 Western is very similar to like a SOM. It's kind of the same thing. Excellent cartridge. But I just don't see myself shooting a heavier bullet than 150 grain in a 270. Maybe if I had that 27 Nosser, I would. Um, but I just don't really see the need. So, man, that 150 grain 270 bullets, awesome. So, I like the 6.8 Western. It's right up there at the top, but I think I would rank it just under the 270 Short Mag in the 300 being the best. I guess that just leaves two, right? What would I, who would win? 300 WSM versus 28 Nosler. In all honesty, it's a toss up. You could go either one. Either one's gonna do a good job. Probably would just depend if I wanted a 24 or a 26 inch barrel. And you could get a 24 in both, but more than likely you're gonna pick a 26 inch barrel for the Nosler. Of course, it's a long action. So if it was strictly for packing and hiking and I wanted a more lightweight, I'd go with the WSM. If that was not a big issue, I'm just gonna go out to my stand or I'm just gonna go out to my blind and sit there. Probably the Nosler. Um, I don't think either one's got tremendously good barrel life, but I'm pretty confident the WSM will have better um, barrel life. But you couldn't go wrong either way. But my personal opinion, I would pick the 300 WSM. I think it's an amazing, amazing cartridge. So, I don't know. I just enjoyed nerding out about this stuff, talking to you guys, drinking some coffee. We're getting close to Christmas, so I wish you a Merry Christmas. Happy coffee drinking, happy cartridge talking, and until next time, see you later. Take care.